Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another TV 31 on one week three with Coach Mike Holder. Took a little bit of time off, but we this week are rejoined by Coach Holder, and we talk about a lot of things we'll get to in a moment. But as we go through the summer months and we get ready for the football season, it's kind of fun to look at the head guy, not Coach Gundy, but the head guy of the athletic department of Coach Holder and talk about the elements that make Coach Holder who he is. He's told us a lot of things about his upbringing. He's told us a lot about uh, some of his days in college, what kind of student he was. In fact, we're kind of going to start there this week, really learning more about uh, Coach Holder, the student. But this week, we start more with Robbie. It's interesting. Robbie Holder looked at her roommate before she was Robbie Holder and said, I'm going to marry that man. That's an interesting uh, comment and, and interesting thoughts leading up to the courtship of Robbie and Mike Holder. And he also talked a little bit about uh, just some of the way that all came to be. And Coach Holder talked a lot about uh, just the four steps of marriage. For young couples, or at least young guys out there, there's some really good knowledge coming this week from Coach Holder. Let's get to it. This week's edition of TV 3101, again, our guest is Coach Mike Holder. The, we start the tournament, and the tournament in Las Cruces was five players count four, and this one was four count, four players count four. Good. And the odd man out was my roommate, Jim Young. And he decided to walk along and watch me play since he couldn't play. And Robbie, who was our hostess, he was the only person to talk to, so she just walked along and talked to him. And she watched all 18 holes. And uh, after the round was over, Jim's, he got the word that his grandfather passed away, so he had to leave to go to the funeral. And so Robbie comes out the next day, and she just follows my group again. I'm not paying any attention to her. And so the next day, she comes up to me and she said, uh, hey, you know, I caddy for my brother all the time. I don't know if she did or not. <laughs> Would you like for me to caddy for you? And I said, no. <laughs> I'm already in trouble with my coach. You need to stay away from you. Stay away, uh, you know. And so it was four rounds. And after the tournament was over, we loaded up in the station wagon and we went back to Stillwater. And she goes home and tells her roommate she's going to marry me. Wow. Yeah. Well, and you hadn't paid her any attention to that point. Because you're, you're very shy, right? Very shy at that point for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I would not what to say to her. Anyway, you know, she wouldn't want to say to her. I'm a golfer. I'm trying to, these pine trees are really tall. And <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to get it in the fairway. All I can uh, see is the pine trees. I've never seen anything like that. So she didn't tell you which club to use? She didn't say, hey, you're, you know, well, hey, don't, don't, what, don't pull out the nine. She's going to caddy for me. I don't know how that would have looked. So the next year, that was in April of my sophomore year. So the next April, I go back down there to the same tournament. Had not talked to her since. Never talked to her. And same banquet. I don't get the lover of the tournament. That's, that's good. That's a lot better. And we get another hostess, and she's drawn in by SMU, I think it was. But she came over and hung out with us, and I kind of sort of noticed her. You know? <laughs> and uh, after the that school year was over, I came down to see her uh, in Houston, and then she came to I was living at Alpha then, and then she came up to a football game that fall because University of Houston played. Uh, in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. They had a great receiver, Elmo Wright, a really, really good football team. I think we beat them. And then I went back down to see her uh, in Thanksgiving and got engaged. So this would have been going into your senior season? That was my, what was that, my junior year. Junior year. Yeah, and then so the next August, right before, no, I guess that's my senior year. And then the next August, we're married. Wow. And I tell people, there's four stages of marriage. <laughs> and I figured this out when I hired the first basketball coach. Uh, there's a lot of sleepless nights as an AD, and I'm staring at the ceiling, and it just came to me like an epiphany. We're four stages of marriage. There's the first stage where you, when you get married, you're newlyweds, and you're lord of the castle. You run the show. You give orders. Every world is right. It's the way it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> Second stage of marriage. All of a sudden, now you're collaborating, you're having conversations. It's kind of a partnership. 
you agree on everything or disagree and you come to a, a compromise, right? Then there's the third stage. Holy smokes. She's making all the decisions. <laughs> She's telling me what to do. She controls the purse strings and everything. And then the fourth stage is, wait a minute, that's the way it's always been. <laughs> she just let me think that I had some influence or authority in the beginning. Four stages, one and two don't exist. <laughs> they never really did exist, right? Yeah. It, so at this point, you're still in school, agronomy major. I mean, did you think you were going to be on the tour at that point? And I want to oh, start yeah. a family? So yeah, I'm going to play the tour. You know, I saw I finished my eligibility. I mean... I hadn't set the world on fire, but I still had 18 toughest hours left in the College of Business to get my degree because I, uh, I wasn't the greatest student. I had a problem getting up and going to class. My last uh, semester before I got married, I didn't make very good grades, and so uh, she straightened that out. <laughs> it's amazing how much better your grades are when you go to class and you actually <laughs> study a little bit. And so, uh, do you have and Coach I, Harris? Do you ever have Coach Harris in class? I, I lasted about two days in his class. He taught typing and shorthand, and it was always 7.30 in the morning, Ooh, and you better be yeah. there. And Ooh. I decided he wasn't cutting me any slack, <laughs> and I'm not sure 7.30 in the morning yeah. in my wheelhouse right now. So I dropped those classes, and I changed my major from agronomy to business because the first semester I was in school, I took uh, chemistry and I took uh, uh, English. I had... Uh, an animal, maybe two animal science courses and botany. And those animal science courses, I'd never been on a farm. I didn't know anything about that. I was learning yeah. how to judge meat. And, <laughs> and uh, so I decided that wasn't for me. I didn't need that transmissive scholarship as bad as I thought I did. My parents probably didn't appreciate that decision. So I changed to business and I put off all the tough classes, all the accountings and everything until my last semester and took those 18 hours and then uh, Let's step aside. When we come back, obviously a very interesting time in Coach Holder's life from marriage and moving to that part, but also the Vietnam draft, talking about the, the potential of being drafted and talking to an advisor about the opportunity of going to grad school. That and more coming up. If you haven't been to TS Fork at White Barn Estates lately, we have an exciting new concept to tell you about. It's called Thirsty Thursdays and it includes four courses of the same high quality food as our other nights and some of the best mixed drinks you've ever had. Best of all, no reservations are required. And while you're there, relax with a drink on our covered patio and check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products. Go to tsfork.com for more details and to check out our upcoming special menus. To all of our neighbors, friends, the people we see every day, we come to you today with no news or announcement, but to let you know what's on our hearts. Because quite simply, we feel honored. You're the reason that what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow, but you're also the reason we believe in the power of sharing the same neighborhoods and a loyalty that's bigger than any challenge. So this is simply thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to move forward and grow, but never lose sight of the roots that connect us. As we step boldly into a time of change and innovation, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Because you're the reason we love what we do and love where we live. The McCafe is now featuring cold brew coffee and cold brew frappes. Face the day with a cold brew coffee from the McCafe with a rich cold brew coffee blended with ice for a creamy frozen drink that's colder than cold brew. Or refresh with a cold creamy frappe. We start with a cold brew coffee blended ice and topped with whipped cream and rich chocolate drizzle for a great anytime frozen treat. McDonald's in Stillwater Perkins, Perry, and Cushing. I'm loving it. 
Kent and Barbara Houck have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Houck Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Houck Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Houck has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state one stop shop the hauk agency 801 south main in stillwater call statewide toll free at 800-543-8588 the hauk agency when experience counts well talking to coach holder we've learned a lot about so many elements of his youth we've learned a lot about the courtship with uh, robbie holder we talked a little bit uh, going into the break uh, the vietnam draft was getting ready to come up and coach obviously didn't want to be a part of that. Nobody did. But uh, had a chance to talk about grad school. Got a chance to talk about turning pro as a golfer. What was in the future for him? And how did he get introduced to James Wadley? Uh, uh, that was during the Vietnam War. So once you finish your undergrad, you had to worry about your student deferment. What you were going to do, we were going to get drafted. And... Uh, I remember they had the lottery on television where you reach in there just like you do the lottery today. And Mayberry RFD will not be presented tonight, but will return next week at its regularly scheduled time over most of these stations. The Draft Lottery, a live report on tonight's picking of the birth dates for the draft. Here at Selective Service Headquarters in Washington is CBS News correspondent Roger Mudd. Good evening. It was 29 years ago that the April first and most famous lottery two, number, six, 158, zero, was. Six, and the famous one. first pick tonight April is September 14th, the first birthday that now is designated 001, which means for 19-year-olds born on September 14th, two, six, that beginning uh, in January, September local draft boards nine. will induct those men born on September 14th, barring September deferments. Nine. So my number was 147. So whatever birth date was number one, they started filling their quota for the year. And the question would be, would they get all the way to 147? And the year before, they had gotten to think 160 or 165. Wow. So I didn't know if I'd get drafted or not. And uh, I went to my local draft board, and they said, if you'll stay in school, then uh, we'll give you a heads up if it looks like your number's going to be called. And I thought, well, that's great, but I've got my undergrad degree. I've got to get in graduate school. Mm -hmm. So I went in to see my advisor, Lawrence Ham. Most people probably are watching this and remember him, great teacher. And uh, I said, Dr. Ham, yes, sir, Mike. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking about getting an MBA. And he got this puzzled look on his face, like, seriously? <laughs> This kid that didn't like school very much wants so he, to go on. He opened up his file cabinet and he reached in there to get the one with my name on it. And he popped it open and he started looking at my transcript and he said, you don't get into graduate school with these grades. <laughs> and I said, well, Dr. Ham, I'm, I'm a lot better student now. Look what I made this last semester. And those were the toughest classes. I've got the ability. He said, yeah, but it's hard to cover up this first, you know, four years you went to school. I said, well, you've got a lot of influence around here. See what you can do. You can probably squeeze me in somehow. And he did. He got me in on probation. And uh, so I started to work on my MBA. And I went that whole year without uh, my draft number being called. And I was halfway through grad school. So I thought I, was, well, I might as well finish my MBA. So, so did, you, did you go play pro at all? No, I didn't. Because when I finished grad school, I got the job as coaching golf. Right, so he, so in that time, you didn't even go try and maybe qualify? I was too or? busy trying to keep my head above water in yeah. grad school. You know, I, was so, working. I had to work a job to pay the bills. Obviously, Coach Harris had been there a long time. You're you're finishing up your master's degree. How did the conver did you ever have a conversation with him that hey, I'm thinking about stepping down? How, how did the how did that even come about? Well, well, first let me let me back up a little bit too. Somewhere in here is a story of James Wadley and hiring you or managing an apartment in a laundry or something. And, and I'm sure when James Wadley tells it, it's only 30% true. So I want to know your side. Well, no, give me more credit. Man. 
love James Wadley's stories. They're fascinating. Yeah, he's a fast talker. Yes, he is. Um, well, the, the only thing that, that Coach Harris, he, he just mentioned to me that he was going to retire and that I should apply. And I think my response was, well, they would never hire me. First of all, I'm too young. I have no experience, and I have no desire to coach. I want to play. My my dream is to finish grad school, and granted, I haven't played much in two years, but go out there, work on my game, and go try to make a living playing pro golf. Uh, but I thought about it a little bit, and I decided, well, what have I got to lose? I'm, st I'm right here in Stillwater. I'll go through the process. So I put my name in, and it came down to three candidates, me, uh, Bobby Getz, and uh, Bob Ellis. And those two guys both played golf here. They were probably... 15 years older than me, maybe. They all had a family. They all had good jobs. Bob Getz was a head pro in Longview, Texas, and Bob Ellis had a teaching business down in Florida. And uh, I think they, they thought the job paid a lot more than it did. I know I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and they thought it was a lot more prestigious than probably in reality it was. And that all stemmed from how much we revered Labor and Harris, mm -hmm. thought sure. of him. And, mm -hmm. I enjoyed playing golf for him, you know. And uh, as I went through that process, and the interviews, and it took forever. I mean, to the regular thing out four or five months, you didn't know wow. what was going to go on. Finally, they brought me in and they offered me the job, and I thought, shucks, I must be pretty impressive. <laughs> I, these other guys are, have a lot more uh, credentials than I do. Why in the world would they pick me for this job? And then I figured it out. They only paid $6,500. They probably thought that I could afford to take the job at that low number. I had a one child, Michelle, and I was married, granted, but I'd had virtually no income, so I wasn't stepping down from right. anything. And these guys, I'm just guessing, made $15,000 or more in their current jobs. If they had been offered the job, I doubt if they could take it. Yeah. And I was so uh, shocked by the low pay. I thought it would pay at least, and I remember I could my mind, it's $12,000. So. Uh, Ed Glover was the comptroller, and I knew him. And so I went over to see him, and I said, Mr. Glover, uh, they've offered me this job, but it's, they've only offered me $6,500. I know that, for example, that tennis coach has to make more than that. <laughs> I just want to know what I should be asking for, because this is, seems like a really low ball offer. The Hideaway since 1957. The Hideaway is famous for a lot of things, including their off-the-charts fried mushrooms, incredible service, unbeatable lunch specials, and, of course, the one-of-a-kind pizza. Stillwater's pizza tradition begins and ends here, from the big country to the pizza of the gods. And even the sizes are famous, from the mini personal to the big kahuna. Like us on Facebook for unique offers. Lunch or dinner, dine-in, pickup, or delivery. The Hideaway, 230 South Mount Block, or call 372-4777. More than a restaurant, it's a tradition. Things are heating up in America's friendliest college town. So check out the cool things happening this July. One fish, two fish, little fish, big fish. Come to catch a palooza and you catch your fish. Don't want a fish? Head to Boomer Blast and catch the fireworks. Got milk? The Sooner State Dairy Show does. Join junior exhibitors and over 200 head of cattle for an utterly good time. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cow says. Cow says who? No, a cow says moo. <laughs> we guarantee better laughs than that at the Still Funny Comedy Show at Iron Monk. Jump, stay, run, sit, move over, Rover. Agility trials are coming to Stillwater. Cheer on, the fan favorite, or the underdog, July 26th to the 28th. Are you an athlete looking to increase your technical skills, mental stamina, and physical endurance? Then we want you at the Epic Sports Experience. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Check out our full listing of events at visitstillwater.org. Kent and Barbara Hauke have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Hauke Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Hauke Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Hauke has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the 
the state. One stop shop, the Hauk Agency, 801 South Main in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. Call statewide toll free at 800 543 8588. The Hauk Agency, when experience counts. Hi, Casey Kendrick, along with Tom Dorado, inviting you to join us each week for Out of Bounds. We talk to guys like Andre Williams, we yeah. talk bracketology, we talk to Guys like uh, Jim Mattel, Bill Annan, we'll talk to Mike Boynton, we'll talk to Colin Carmichael. Who don't we talk to? Well, all we have to do is ask, and they come down. And that's the beauty of this show, I think, is the fact that you get the chance to get inside a program. I wouldn't say inside your head. <laughs> inside a program, and they tell you all you need to know. We have a good time with all our guests, and we just have a good time period on this show. Absolutely. Difference makers in sports all across the region. High school sometimes, sometimes collegiate, doesn't matter. We get a chance to talk to them all. It's Out of Bounds. Catch it each and every week. The raw version, unedited. You get a chance to see all the ugliness of putting a show together every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. That's right. The edited version, uh, Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock, and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. from our Oklahoma Ag Credit Studios. It's Out of Bounds weekly right here on TV 31. Coach Holder wasn't the head coach when he came to Oklahoma State. He was a player. He played, obviously, for Coach Labron Harris, and he, he talked about his relationship with Coach Harris and how important it was. But now, an opportunity for him to be the head coach, to take over and make a whopping $6,500 a year. Coach didn't know the salary was that low. Coach Wadley told him, it's not really a bad offer. You might want to consider it. He goes in the back room, he comes back out, and he says, you really don't want to know what that tennis coach is making. <laughs> I said, yeah, dude, what's he making? He says, I'm thinking it's $10,000, 12000 He said, he's making 45000 <laughs> And that was Wadley. James Wadley, that's exactly yeah, right. He had been on the job one year. Wow. But to make ends meet, he was managing Washington Square Apartments out there at the corner of Airport Road and uh, Boot Road. And to... So when I decided to take the job in the 6500, they also offered me an opportunity to teach quarter time in the College of Business. I taught management, and they paid me uh, $2,500 for that. So what's that, $9,000? And then James said, uh, if you'll come out here and you'll help, ended up Robbie, will help manage the apartment complex, we'll give you free rent out here. I think that's what we got there. So we didn't have to pay for apartment. We got sure. to out of Married student housing yeah. on the Ned Shag carpet. We thought we were, <laughs> we thought we were in the penthouse. That was great. Did Did Robbie come from a, a family of, of means? No, her dad was uh, in the Corps at Texas A and M. Her brother played football at A and M. Her uncle played football there. In fact, he was one of their all time great running backs. Wow. Uh, so she's Aggie, you know, Longhorns Aggie. Doesn't know what really is. So. Uh, but she was salutatorian of her graduating class. And she wanted to go to a big school because that was a small school mm -hmm. in Jasper. And um, she got accepted to Texas because you couldn't go to A&M as a co-ed back then unless you wanted to major in veterinary medicine. Right? Wow. Um, and she got accepted and she went to enroll and she just couldn't be a Longhorn. <laughs> so she looked around for another big school where she could just be a number and Houston looked like a great spot for her to land, so that's why she went to Houston. Back up just a minute. Did you go ask for her father's hand in marriage? I probably did. I can't remember. <laughs> now, you've you got to remember that. that. You oh, have please. to remember that please. because that had to be the one of the most strenuous things you ever did as a shy guy. I, I remember mine. I couldn't believe that anyone that beautiful would even <laughs> give me so you, the time you were, of day. You were so awestruck it didn't even matter then. Yeah, you know, just whatever. So, got the ring. Chris Cole was my roommate, and his uh, dad had connections. And so he got me a good discount on a nice <laughs> uh, engagement ring, and I asked her to marry me over at Thanksgiving. Wow, that's a long time ago, too. What is that? That was 1969, so is that 50 years ago? 60, Working on 60 years ago. Holy smokes. See, you don't even know it's 50 or 60 years. 50 years ago. 50, 50 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 yeah. years ago. You're not that old. No, so, no. so do you remember getting down on one knee? No. I'm did sure I did. Sure <laughs> I did. I'd seen some movies. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen, you seen a few of the uh, the old old guys doing that, right? Yeah. Um, 
What was your first job? Very first job ever. Oh. Did you do anything as a kid? I mean, because ultimately you haven't had many jobs in your life. No, my dad uh, let me play golf. Uh, in Altus, once I got in college that one summer, um, to help out a little bit, I got a job as a carpenter and I about wore out my thumb. I kept hitting it with that hammer. I wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> you think a golfer would be better. <laughs> Man, that's why I'm not playing the PGA Tour. Um, and then after I got married, I worked at IGA as a, for Dwight McCormick as a sacker uh, and stalker. Well, uh -huh. uh, I did uh -huh. that and uh, when I was in graduate school, finishing up my undergrad. And then I was a, a graduate assistant for Norman Horner in the College of Business in the dean's office. And I did that and that was a really great experience for me because I was terrible in English and I d couldn't write anything. I couldn't, uh, if I had to write a thesis or a theme, it just traumatized me. And he forced me to write a newsletter every quarter wow. for the College of Business mm -hmm. where I had to compile newspaper clippings and things and consolidate them. And it was really good training for me. I hated every minute of it. But I look back and thank you, Norman Warner. Yeah. Where do you go for computer help? Gigabytes. Gigabyte staff are experts in virus removal, software updates, and faster running computers. Gigabytes also provide small business support and network support, including websites. And they do laptop screen replacements, and they do all kinds of cosmetic repairs as well. Whatever your computer needs, they are the ones that can provide you with the answers and solutions to get you up and running. Gigabytes, 918 South Main, open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, or call 533-1715. There's only one place you should go for new and expecting moms, Charlie's Baby, inside Charlie's Drag. You can choose from a wide range of unique products to support mom before, during, and after pregnancy and throughout her breastfeeding journey. Let our dedicated staff assist you in choosing the perfect gift to support mom or help spoil that precious baby. Our unique selection is guaranteed to make your gift their very favorite. Visit us today at Charlie Baby, inside Charlie's Drug. America's friendliest college town. So check out the cool things happening this July. One fish, two fish, little fish, big fish. Come to catch a palooza and you catch your fish. Don't want a fish? Head to Boomer Blast and catch the fireworks. Got milk? The Sooner State Dairy Show does. Join junior exhibitors and over 200 head of cattle for an utterly good time. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cow says. Cow says who? No, a cow says moo. <laughs> We guarantee better laughs than that at the Still Funny Comedy Show at Iron Monk. Jump, stay, run, sit, move over, Rover. Agility trials are coming to Stillwater. Cheer on, the fan favorite, or the underdog, July 26th to the 28th. Are you an athlete looking to increase your technical skills, mental stamina, and physical endurance? So we want you at the Epic Sports Experience. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Check out our full listing of events at visitstillwater.org. To our neighbors and friends, we come to you today to let you know what's on our hearts. Because you're the reason what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow and the power of community. So this is simply thank you. As we step boldly into a time of growth and change, consider this our promise, that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Have you tried TS Fork yet? They have great meals being served weekly on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But I want to tell you about their incredible Sunday lunches. Every Sunday from 11 to 2, you can drop in at TS Fork at White Barn Estates for a lunch like Grandma used to make. The menu changes weekly, but it includes selections like fried chicken, roast beef, meatloaf, and all the fixings. No reservations needed, special pricing for kids, and a great home-cooked meal at TS Fork. And while you're there, check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products and items you won't find any Anywhere else. Learn more at tsfork.com. Well, that puts a wrap on another TV 31 on one, continuing our conversation with Coach Holder. We're not done. We still have three more shows with Coach. Really, again, gracious with his time to sit down and talk to us and really to talk about everything from his childhood all the way to, to where he sits as the athletic director at Oklahoma State and even eventually talk about his heir apparent in uh, Chad Weiberg. So some great stuff still coming up. 
Coach, talked about being a uh, very shy, certainly in the courtship uh, of uh, Robbie Holder. Well, how shy was he when he had his first opportunity as head coach to meet with his team, getting his first recruit, and what was it like winning that first national championship? That and much more next time with Coach Holder right here on TV 3101.